dear students by now we have completed 6 weeks of this online course on environmental sociology from today's class we will start a new unit that is contesting space over nature for the coming 4 weeks we will discuss this unit on contesting space over nature where we will discuss several modules focusing on contestations movements and conflicts concerning nature and we will focus on different ideas ideologies and theoretical perspectives on contest related to nature in the last few decades environmental movements have emerged as one of the dominant movement shaping the realities of the world and when we see these environmental movements and when we see the pervasive presence of these environmental movements several questions comes to our mind why do people join these movements what message these movements are trying to pass through what brings people together what are the common themes what are the common ideas behind these movements answering these questions today's module environmentalism around the world past and present discusses historical emergence of environmental movements and its spread to different parts of the globe the broad objective of today's module is to explore the origin and historical journey of global environmentalism and discuss its past and present forms it also aims to examine different phases and strands of environmentalism after successfully completing this module you will be able to explain the origin and global spread of environmentalism and distinguish between the first world and the third world varieties of environmentalism in today's class we will basically discuss three topics we will begin with a discussion on meaning and historical emergence of environmentalism then we'll discuss about a uh, global spread of environmentalism and finally we will discuss different phases or different waves of environmentalism where we will discuss uh, the past and present of environmentalism we will highlight that what are the uh, what are the basic principles what the what are the basic premises of the contemporary environmentalism and how it is different from environmentalism of the past so let us begin with the first part of today's class that is uh, where we will discuss the meaning of environmentalism and its historical emergence we, when we see these environmental movements several questions emerge in our mind what are these environmental movements what are the basic ideas that these environmental movements are trying to pass through so when we see environmentalism and environmental movements we realize that these two concepts are closely related or in other words environmentalism and environmental movements are closely related concepts so let us distinguish how environmentalism is different from that of environmental movement environmental movements are basically collective mobilizations concerning environment where the basic aim to uh, where the basic aim is to preserve a specific nature protest against against the degradation of nature and to to prescribe less destructive technologies and environmentalism is a political idea it is a political philosophy which brings together people for that collective mobilization like we have no different kind of isms like marxism liberalism capitalism so in in the sense ism denotes a particular kind of idea ism denotes a particular kind of philosophy in that sense environmentalism also denotes a particular kind of philosophy particular kind of political ideas which essentially helps in bringing pe people together which essentially helps in mobilizing people together to 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 protect the nature and to to protest against its degradation in that sense environmentalism calls for uh, in, in that sense environmentalism calls for an ethical view towards the nature it it calls for an ethical view towards the nature and seeks to limit the undo uh, seeks to limit and undo the amount of uh, negative impact on nature in other words environmentalism basically talks about uh, environmentalism is a philosophical idea it, it is a, a political idea which helps people come together to 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 start a, a collective mobilization against against environmental degradation so in that sense environmentalism or environmental ideas begins with an awareness about the negative impacts on nature and these negative impacts are essentially human generated negative impacts or human induced negative impacts in that sense environmentalism as an idea environmentalism as as a philosophy is a departure from industrialism because it is perceived that it is the industrialism or industrial 
uh, way of life or, or especially human activities after industrial revolution which had in, a severe negative impact on nature and environmentalism essentially talks about environmentalism essentially uh, portrays an idea where these negative externalities or these negative impacts can be dealt with. In that sense, environmentalism calls from an ethical view towards nature, it calls to protect the nature and seeks to limit uh, or seeks to, to, to undo the negative impacts on nature. And as I told that net, these negative impacts are essentially human induced or human generated negative impacts. Perhaps one of the best way to understand environmentalism is to begin with a definition. Let's see that how Ramchandra Goa has defined environmentalism. I quote Ramchandra Goa. Goa says that environmentalism must be viewed as a social program. It is a charter of action which seeks to protect the cherished habitat, protest against their degradation and prescribe less destructive technologies and lifestyles. If we see this definition a little carefully, we may understand several strands or several propositions of environmentalism. To begin with, environmentalism is a social program. It is a program which, which identifies or which, which, uh, which, which identifies several ways, several, several activities to protect the nature. It is also an ideology to protest against the degradation. Whenever there is a degradation of nature, whenever there is a degradation of our environment, environmentalism emerges as an idea which, which essentially talk about to which essentially talks about protesting against these degradations. And it is also a prescriptive in nature, environmentalism also prescriptive in nature where it prescribes ways and prescribes, prescribes means where we can reduce our degradation of nature, where, where, we, can, where we can minimize our uh, uh, degradation of nature. So in that sense, environmentalism is both an ideology and a practice. It is as an ideology. It talks about basic beliefs, a fundamental philosophy where we, we come forward to protect uh, environmental degradation or to preserve our cherished habitat. And as a practice, it is a political reform or it is a program of political reform which talks about coming out with different activities, coming out with different endeavors where we can protect the nature. So in that sense, environmentalism emerges as an aesthetic or literary appreciation of nature. So as an idea or as an ideology, environmentalism talks about glorification of nature, environmentalism talks about, uh, uh, talks about positive features of, of, of presence of nature, how nature helps us in our day to day life. And it is also, uh, it, it is a call, it, 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 environmentalism also is a concern for uh, which is manifested in the classical literary traditions like when we when we see literatures when we see when we see uh, uh, folk literatures or when we see uh, traditional literary text we also find description of the beauty of the nature in that sense environmentalism becomes a multifaceted concept it is a concept which talks about a particular kind of ideology which talks about a particular kind of particular kind of political philosophy which brings people together to, to start a collective mobilization against environmental degradation. It is also a political, it, it is also a, a, a political reform or it is, an, it is a program for political reforms where it talks about to begin several activities, several, several efforts to, to protect environmental degradation and environmentalism is also a literary appreciation of nature where we describe or where, 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 we, where, where we narrate uh, the beauty of nature. So in that sense, environmentalism becomes or environmentalism emerges as a multifaceted concept which has several manifestations and which has several connotations. Let us see that how environmentalism emerges as a political philosophy or how environmentalism emerges as a dominant idea. When we see environmental movements or when we see environmental movements that, uh, that, that emerged in 1960s and late 70s, late 70s we may think or we may, we, may, we, may, we may come to a conclusion that environmentalism began in uh, 1970s. However, when we see the intellectual history of environmentalism, when we, when we see the intellectual origin of environmentalism, we realize that its origin uh, goes back to the 18th century itself. Because as we have already discussed that environmental degradation and industrial revolution had their origin in the same time. So in that sense, there has been an idea about, about protection of nature, there has been an idea about preservation of na nature starting from the industrial revolution itself. So in that sense, uh, we may understand that ideas about protection of nature emerged 
simultaneously along with industrial revolution which essentially degraded the nature however when when we see or when we understand environmentalism as a political struggle environmentalism as a political movement we say that it is of recent origin which began in 1960s or 70s perhaps the best way to understand the emergence and global spread of environmentalism is to look at ramchandra goa's work i am specifically referring to ramchandra goa's book environmentalism a global history published by oxford university press ramchandra goa identifies two waves of environmentalism which he says as the first wave and the second wave the first wave of, of environmentalism is essentially and response to the onsla onslaught of industrialization so in that sense first wave of environmentalism began side by side with with industrial revolution where new ideas new 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 philosophies came forward which which essentially uh, uh, manifested the negative consequences of industrial revolution the second wave of uh, the second wave of environmentalism is of recent origin the second wave uh, of environmentalism emerged in 1970s where the intellectual response was given uh, a shape in the form of a uh, popular protest so in that sense environmentalism second wave is of recent origin which emerges or which which is manifested in the form of popular protest against degradation or in other words with with the emergence of environmental movements so let us understand the global spread of environmentalism by adopting ramchandra goa's framework of first wave and second wave of environmentalism in order to understand environmentalism and its global spread ramchandra goa has has identified the first wave and the second wave of environmentalism again he divided the first wave of environmentalism into three strands the strand of back to the land the strand of scientific conservation and the wilderness ideas similarly he has divided the second wave of environmentalism into two strands the strand of ecology of affluence and the second strand is that of uh, is that of the southern challenge so the basic difference between the first wave of environmentalism and the second wave of environmentalism is that the first wave is an is is in response to the onslaught of industrial revolution so it emerges simultaneously along with the industrial revolution however the second wave of environmentalism is of recent origin which emerged with large scale global large scale global political protest political struggles against environmental degradation so let us understand these two waves of environmentalism through its different strands so let us begin with the first wave of environmentalism as i just discussed the first wave of environmentalism is divided into three strands that is the back to the land second scientific conservation and third the wilderness ideas as we just mentioned that industrialism uh, as we just mentioned environmentalism's first wave as we just mentioned environmentalism first wave emerged side by side with industrial revolution in that sense ramchandra goa considers environmentalism as an initial response to the industrial revolution itself we need to understand industrial revolution and its impact to understand the emergence of environmentalism with industrial revolution the natural world was dramatically altered with new methods of resource extraction production and transportation because of industrial revolution there has been an increase in scale and intensity of industry uh, in intensity of extraction of resources there has been advancement of, of of medical technology which has resulted in 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 increase in human population so increasing human population again meant that there is increasing demand for food there is increasing demand for resources and increasing demand for resources led to greater production and greater production led to uh, greater waste or greater industrial waste so in other words industrial revolution brought forward a completely new kind of structure industrial revolution brought forward a completely new kind of social structure which had a different kind of impact on nature on the one hand production was increasing on the one hand extraction of resource was increasing because of high demand of resources on the other hand because of advancement in medical technology there has been a greater population growth and greater population growth also demanded more food and more natural resources so in other words greater demand for natural resources greater expansion of of extraction of natural resources and greater uh, uh, and and increase in, in increase in industrial waste or increase in uh, industrial effluents that had severe impact on the natural world while industrialization was transforming the natural world at the same time there also 
there also uh, was occurring a change in the agricultural sector because of industrial revolution agriculture was also simultaneously was being mechanized there was industrialization of agriculture, uh, agriculture also and simultaneously when at the same time there was mechanization of agriculture there was industrial revolution another political phenomenon also was happening which is important to understand global spread of fundamentalism and Ramchandra Goa here refers to the expansion of colonialism in other words Ramchandra Goa argues that European economic growth impacted natural uh, in other words Ramchandra Goa argues that industrialization imperial expansion and environmental degradation are organically related we need to understand that that industrial impacts of industrial revolution or, or we need to understand that impact of industrial revolution is organically related with colonial expansion because colonial expansion resulted in, in, in expansion of territories from which resources can be extracted. So while on the one hand industrial revolution has resulted has increased, increased extraction of, of resources, colonial expansion facilitated acquiring new lands, acquiring new markets or acquiring new resources from which resources can be extracted and, and can be used in the industrial process or used in the production process. In that sense, Ramzan Ruga says that these three processes or these three social processes, industrial revolution, colonial expansion and industrial degradation. Or, uh, in that sense, Ramzan Ruga argues that these three social processes, industrial uh, revolution, colonial expansion and environmental degradation these three are intrinsically related let me give you this quote from Chandra Goa which 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 further explains the basic linkages or the organic linkages between colonial expansion industrial in industrial uh, uh, industrial production and environmental degradation Ramchand Goa says that the British ship was built by the Burmese stick their sailors uh, wearing clothes grown in India and drinking the Kenyan coffee sweetened with sugar planted in, 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 planted in the Caribbean. What does that mean? That means the global spread of resource extraction. Colonialism was not just a spread of, of political power. It is not just consolidation of, of world economy. It was also expansion of extraction of resources of the world. In that sense, Ramchandra Goa says that it is the colonial expansion that has resulted in greater extraction of the resources throughout the world. So there is, a, there, there is an intrinsic or there is an organic relationship between colonial expansion and industrial, uh, colonial expansion and environmental degradation. Because now environmental degradation or en environmental extraction is not just uh, uh, carried out in a limited manner, but environmental, uh, but extraction of resources are carried out in a global manner, and that has been possible because of expansion of colonial power. So, therefore, we, if you need to understand environmentalism, or if you need to understand emergence of environmentalism, we also need to understand expansion of the colonial power, because it is because of expansion of the colonial power or the colonial expansion, the imperial expansion, that has resulted in greater degradation of natural resources throughout the world. In that sense, industrial revolution, colonial expansion, and environmental degradation that has an intrinsic organic relationship and we need to understand that 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 uh, that environmental degradation happened because of this organic relationship because of the organic linkages between these three social processes let's come back to the Ramchandra Goa's framework of understanding the global spread of environmentalism as I told that Ramchandra Goa has identified two waves of environmentalism the first wave and the second wave and in the first wave he has identified three strands of environmentalism the first one is back to the land second scientific conservation and third the wilderness ideas let us discuss the first strand of the first wave that is back to the land ideas Ramchandra Goa says that back to the land was a moral and cultural critic to industrialization it was a moral and cultural critic to industrialization which was manifested through literary traditions and Gandhi's ideas of Gram Swaraj. When we see British literary history or when we see British literary uh, traditions, we find that nature has been glorified or nature has been narrated through several literary uh, uh, scholars like or literary figures like William Wordsworth, John Clare, John Roskin, who depicted the negative impacts of industrialization through their literary works. So therefore, it is the, it is the literature or it is, it is through literature, 
through poem through poems or through literary works that the negative impacts of industrialization was explained while while these poems or the novels they they they, they glorified the nature or they describe the beauty of the nature they narrated the beauty of the nature the simultaneously also pointed out that how nature is being degraded how nature is being destroyed because of rising industrialization in that sense part of the first ideas about nature or first ideas about degradation of nature emerged from the literary traditions where where the literary figures pointed out the or where the glorified beauties of the nature the romanticized beauties of the uh, beauty of the nature and at the same time also pointed out that nature is being significantly degraded because of industrial revolution again ramchandra goa also says that the back to the land movement or the back to the land ideas are manifested in the third world with gandhi's ideas of gram swaraj or gandhi's ideas of of village life in the indian context or or in the developing countries context ramchandra goa identifies mahatma gandhi as an a great environmentalist so gandhi's ideas of environmentalism uh, uh, gandhi's ideas of environmentalism can be put forth in this Uh, a single sentence that where gandhi has said that the world has enough resources for everybody's need but not enough for one person's greed so therefore gandhi can be considered as an early environmentalist who anticipated the damaging effects of industrial uh, the damaging effects of industrial production on 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 the con- uh, who anticipated the damaging effects of industrial economy and con- and, and and consumer society on the nature so in that sense gandhi focused on rural Uh, gandhi focused on 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 rural development gandhi decisively rejected industrialism as an option for the modern india so gandhi's ideas about rural india gandhi's ideas about village swaraj or gram swaraj that essentially captures the essence of environmentalism which stands apart or which stands as opposed to the industrialism as a way of life so in that sense the initial ideas of nature or industrial in initial ideas of nature conservation uh, is manifested through the literary traditions through the gandhi's ideas or the gandhi's gandhian philosophy and in that sense these ideas of nature conservation these ideas of 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 degradation of nature may be considered as as a moral critic to industrialization as a cultural critic to industrialization and as opposed to to industrial life these ideas put forth a romantic rural life where where, where nature was glorified because of its beauty nature was glorified because because of its its contribution to 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 people's life now let's come to the second strand of the first wave of environmentalism ramchandra goa says that the second strand of the first wave may be conceptualized as scientific conservation by the end of 19th century western scientists have started exploring the links between deforestation drought and soil erosion gradually with with scientific investigation of of degradation of nature it was realized that there is an intrinsic link between the large scale industrialization rapid uh, deforestation soil erosion and decline in rainfall so therefore this scientific ideas about degradation of nature scientific inquiries about degradation of nature uh, uh, pointed out that there is a linkage between different there is a linkage between different aspects of environmental degradation and essentially these aspects of environmental degradation whether it is deforestation whether it is soil erosion or whether it is decline in rainfall are essentially related to the process of but to, they are essentially related to the process of industrialization or industrial revolution so so uh, so, so the second wave of so the second strand of uh, environmentalism uh, was manifested through the use of scientific knowledge to manage nature and natural resources so in this strand emphasis was given to concept, concepts like carrying capacity emphasis was given to concepts like maximum sustainable yield so approaching environment or approaching environmental conservation from a scientific perspective this strand of environmentalism pointed out that uh, this strand of environmentalism emphasized these two concepts let us discuss these two concepts what is maximum sustainable yield and what is carrying capacity the carrying capacity debate or the carrying capacity ideology pointed out that earth or that 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 specific resources has certain certain abilities to to carry certain demand or in other words earth as a pool of natural resources has a specific capacity to to to, to carry certain demands on it so when when our demand of natural resources increases or when we when we when, when we extract more and more resources that results in crossing 
carrying capacity or that results in going beyond carrying capacity and similarly maximum su sustainable yield pointed out the maximum amount of resources that can be extracted from the ecosystem without degrading the stock of the ecosystem. So in that sense maximum sustainable yield and carrying capacity pointed out towards the limits of ecological system. The central point of these arguments was that that ecology or that that ecosystem has a, a limit ecosystem has an ecological limit and beyond that limit any degradation of nature cannot be repaired. So in that sense industrialization has to understand or industrial processes has to work within these limits of nature and once we cross these limits of nature when we when we extract resources or when we when we uh, uh, withdraw resources beyond these limits perhaps then it becomes difficult to to repair the loss that is that uh, repair the loss that has been done to to the nature so scientific conservation basically pointed out towards environmental manager managerialism where nature can be managed with scientific principles nature can be managed with scientific knowledge so influenced by the ideas of scientific conservation several efforts were made at the global level to conserve uh, the resources and and by the mid 19th century global efforts for conservation uh, was made through centralized policy frameworks in different parts of the colonized world so therefore we find that in different parts of the colonized world forest policies were were implemented conservation policies were implemented around this time for example uh, uh, in 1859 uh, the Forest Protection Act was 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 enacted in South Africa in 1862. Forest Reserve Ordinance was passed in Vietnam in 1865. Forest legislations were passed in Java in 1865. Again, uh, uh, Forest Conservation Act or, or Indian Forest Act was passed uh, passed. And similarly, in different parts of the colonial colonial world, it is around the same time that conservation policies were implemented with 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 the centralized uh, with, with the centralized uh, policy framework. So. By the end of 19th century, conservation of nature became an and conservation of nature became an important environmental agenda, and and these conservation efforts were backed by scientific principles, backed by scientific scientific knowledges of degradation. Because as I just mentioned, that a linkage was established between deforestation, between deforestation, uh, industrial uh, a linkage was established between industrialization, deforestation, soil erosion, uh, uh, loss in rainfall. So these scientific knowledges or these scientific perspectives resulted in in different conservation activities and 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 enactment of different policies, which which essentially. Uh, which essentially aimed at conservation of natural resources in different parts of the world. Now let us come to the third strand of the first wave of environmentalism where Ramchandra Gua says that, that, that uh, uh, the third strand is about, uh, is about the wilderness idea. So in the third uh, strand uh, continuous or, or continuing from the scientific conservation or continuing from the scientific ideas or the scientific ideas of nature conservation a strand or, or an, a, a philosophy emerged in environmental protection which demanded protection or preservation of wild resources, preservation of, of wildlife and uh, flora and fauna. And uh, we may find that the historical origin of wilderness conservation through popular, uh, 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 through popular traditions of sacred groves or through, through popular traditions of sacred animals. However, in the modern sense or the modern wilderness ideas can be traced back to the conference which was held in London in 1900 which, si which signed the convention for the preservation of animals, birds and fish. And after that several conservation efforts were carried out in the, colonize, uh, in the colonial world which talks about conservation of resources and especially, uh, uh, especially the policy frameworks were, were implemented for conservation of resources, uh, conservation of national parks. So therefore national park or, or establishment of national park emerged as a dominant strategy to preserve the nature or to protect, uh, uh, pro protect the, uh, pro protect the uh, nature. Let us summarize the first part of this lecture where we discuss the emergence and, and spread of uh, global environmentalism. If you see Ramchandra Gua's framework of, of, uh, of, of spread of global environmentalism, he has divided it into first wave and the second wave. And first wave essentially talks about three important conservation ideas or three important environmental ideas. The first idea was that of a moral and cultural critique to industrialization which is manifested through different literary traditions, which is manifested through Gandhian ideas of Gram Soros and uh, which is manifested through, through a cultural and moral critique towards industrialization. 
the second strand was the ideas of scientific conservation where nature conservation was approached through the ideas of science through the lens of scientific knowledge and these ideas of, uh, of, of scientific uh, or these ideas of nature conservation through scientific knowledge gave rise to what we know as environmental managerialism that nature can be managed environment can be managed with that of uh, scientific knowledge and the third idea uh, within the first uh, within the first wave is that of wilderness ideas and wilderness ideas resulted in radical conservation ideas or radical environmentalism which which emphasized on on conservation of, of, of resources conservation of nature and declaration of certain certain animal species as endangered species and preservation of a forest so the basic point to understand in this first wave of environmentalism is that the first wave of environmentalism basically besides the literary traditions or literary, besides the literary appreciation of nature the first wave of environmentalism uh, talked about two ways of looking at nature one which looks at nature from a managerial perspective which is that nature can be managed with 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 right kind of interventions the second approach talks about a radical environmentalism so while in the first uh, approach or while in the managerial approach nature is perceived as, as as a resource which has to manage for the betterment of human society because we draw our resources from the nature so therefore nature has to be managed in a way that it continues to provide resources it continues to provide benefits to the human society the second approach talks about a more radical environmentalism which talks about nature and wildlife should be preserved and 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 they should be preserved with certain radical steps 